my lovely ravens, welcome back to my channel, my name is Chantelle and today I'm going to show you how to make little tickets and how to decorate them with not a lot of supplies. So what I have here is some manila folder offcuts, I have some stamps for decorating, I have some used tea bags, doily, paper bag, brown paper, tea stained paper, tea stained uh, kitchen towel, some book pages, and that's about it really, and some glue of course. Now you can decorate these any way you like, I'm just going to show you the very basic way with just some scraps and leftovers, but first I'm going to show you how to make these. Now you know that the Tim Holtz tags are pretty expensive and they always come in certain sizes. These you can make any size you like. So I've got these small ones, even tinier ones, um, longer ones, and you can make these interactive as well if you would like, if you like to. So let me show you how to make these. These are obviously made from scrapbook paper. Today I'm going to use Manila file, and um, you can use this with any leftovers really, as long as it's kind of cardstock paper. Now the first thing I'm going to do is cut this piece in half because it's very wide and that's something I don't want. Not for this purpose at least. And because I want mine to be vintage, I'm just going to tear this. You can cut this as well, of course, whatever you want. That will do. Now, let's see. Let's cut off a little bit of this excess. There we go. Um, let's see. I want that corner to be straight. There we go. And now I can decide how wide I want these uh, tags to be. So the height of this one is about two and a quarter inch or five and a half centimeters. And it's about 18, in 18 centimeter, centimeters in length. So for this size, I think I would just pull them in half because I like this size ticket. Now what you're gonna do is either cut the corners off straight or with a bit of a curve. You can also do this with a hole punch. This is what I would normally use. If you cut them off straight, it would look different. So I will make two, one with straight edges and one with rounded edges. Rounded edges. Just gonna snip off a quarter of a circle. Same here. And then with these ones, you're gonna just cut off little corners. So again, this is preference, whatever you want, really. So I do like this, but I also do like this. And this is more that vintage ticket feel, but you can definitely just use this if you don't have a hole punch or you don't wanna cut around in a circle. It's absolutely fine. Now this is basically the basics of making tickets. I'm gonna make a few more so I can show you how to decorate the small ones as well. Now when you have this long strip, this is one inch wide and however long you want it to be. I'm gonna fold it in half and fold it back on itself and then do that again for the other side. And do that again for the other side. And that's a nice ticket size. Just gonna fold this like so. And I'm folding them individually, just with one piece of paper folded, because it's very thick. And then you take your strip of zigzags, and you're going to cut the corners. Mm 
there you have a strip of tickets. It's that easy. And if you're using stamps, decorating is going to go even faster. I might show you stamps with like half the tickets as well. So where did my other ones go? Where these ones for my sake, because I like the rounded edges a little bit more than these edges. I'm going to round these because I will be using them in my projects. There we go. So we're gonna do stamps on those and normal decoration on these. Normal. I mean, we're gonna deco decorate them all in the end. Let's see. Um, I'm gonna start with the three part layering technique that I've showed you before. I think it was in the first video. So just use tea bags. I like to use them for my projects and just add some interest. Because look at that effect. Isn't that beautiful? And it's that semi-see-through. Semi so mine are going to be very vintage based. Decorate these ones the same way. And you know what? It is okay if pieces stick out a little bit. That's not an issue. Not an issue at all. I'm going to glue down these pieces. Um, I am going to grab my ink. And as always, I'm using Distress Ink by Tim Holtz Ranger. Um, and it's Gathered Twigs. This is the color that I... This is the only brown that I've got. So I'm just going to ink around all the edges of the papers. Just to give it that vintage look. Like so. It stands out a lot more. And I'm also going to edge edge <laughs> go around the edges of all the tickets like so like what a different look that gives over the other one but hey it's just what you want to go for and what look you want to give it there we go and i'll be back with you once i've inked up everything all right everything's inked up and now we're gonna stick everything on well not everything but at least the pages You can glue them wherever you want. It is a similar feel for all the tickets, but they're not all quite the same. You can, of course, do put them all the same. Like that is there's no rhyme or reason, really. Next up is adding some texture. I have some kitchen towel here and some of the tea bag. You can use fabric, ribbon, lace, more paper, whatever you want, really. Um, I'm going to use some of this this stuff and some of this, that stuff. And now I see that the contra contrast is not really there. So first I will add some brown paper. So now that contrast is there. There we go. Something like that. I'm going to stick all these pieces down and then add that texture. And this is what we have so far. So now I'm going to add that texture. And you can see that the the pages are slightly shining through and that is what I wanted. But again, you can replace this texture stuff with anything like fabric or ribbon or whatever you have on hand. I did end up using all the, the tea bags for all of these because I just like how dark they are in contrast with the other pieces. So. But again, you can use whatever you want. Next is spicing up these things. Now, as you know, we're gonna do two sets with the uh, with stamps, and the other part we're gonna do with other kinds of stamps. So if you have stamps or washi tape, you can um, go ahead and do whatever you please with this part. So. For this, I would like to keep it kind of neutral. So you can do two stamps on there, or you can um, put some neutral looking washi tape on there. Um, I'll see I have, if I have some that is neutral, because I think most of mine is either bright or black. Uh, I think black would go with this too. 
So there's two stamps. You can also use images from magazines. I think stamps always adds a bit of interest there though. If you have cutouts of words, you can overlay them on here as well. You can go as crazy as you like. And even these pops of color do great on these little ones. I'm gonna go ahead and find more stamps and I'll be back with you when I found them all. And then like last time, I'm also gonna add some thread behind the stamps and some staples too, because I think that will look cool. And uh, it adds a bit of, um, I don't know, roughness, I suppose, to the, uh, or texture as well, to the uh, kind of a steampunky vibe to the vintage vibe. So I was in the zone and I glued everything down <laughs> without showing you with how to do that with a thread. So I stuck on the three part cluster, I stuck down two stems on these ones and these stems I just tore in half so they fit better on the small tags or tickets, I should say. Now with the thread, just cut up a piece Scrunch it up, put some glue on where you think this thing will go. So this one is going to go there. So it's going to have that there. Stick that one on top like so. You've got that extra element of the string. And then what you can do as well is add a staple or two, if you want. You don't have to, of course. But it just adds that little bit of extra. And it's it's simple, it's cheap, you know. And it just adds that extra element. Of course, you will have the staples showing at the back, but I kind of like this style of layering. I have done this many times and I've given these things away as well to friends. So, and occasionally I use them in my journals. I haven't used them in journals lately because I simply didn't have any. But as you can see, this doesn't take an awful lot of time and effort to make, especially not when you do many in one go. There we have that one. So these two are basically done and you can put this in a journal just like that, just as they are, just for some interest, or you can tear them off and then put them in the journal. Another thing I wanted to show you, I will do that with these ones, is you can add a tear off strip. Um, it's a little bit easier to show that with this one and for this one I will use the corner. So what you will use for that is a, a soft surface you can punch the needle in. And then you need some kind of pokey tool. I'll use this one because I can't see the other one now. A little line, very faint line with some pencil. And this is how you can make this interactive. If you do this, it creates a little tarot strip. You can also do this with the sewing machine. So without the thread in it, just run your needle across it and then you've got that same effect. But that makes it interactive so the, the person receiving it, they can tear this off for something or it, just or it just looks like a ticket to somewhere or for something. You can also just use your ruler and just puncture holes across the ruler. To be honest, I prefer this method Yes, you have to poke all the holes, but I don't have to have that big sewing machine on my desk. There we go. Now you can tear that strip off if you like. I'm just going to grab some stamps. Let's see if this two hold stuff works for me. It's pretty faint, so I am going to grab some of my black ink and a different stamp and see what else I can do. For now, this just has a very faint background kind of effect. 
So I've got my black ink here. I've had this ink for ages. It's from Versafine. And I really do like this black ink. So I have a row of birds here. And I have some ticket-like stuff. So I think this ticket would look cool on this side. I'm just gonna put the ticket element in the ink and then try and put it on there. So there's that ticket element. And then this part is says this moment. And that could go in that top corner here. There we have that one. Because most of you probably have stems at home, so you can do this at home too. And then we have those birds. Just gonna stamp the whole thing. I'm gonna run that across here. So we have those birds there now. And then some birds at the top here. Perhaps some down here. There we have it. And then on top of that, you can also add the stamps again. So if we have some small ones. And then I think I would like to add the thread. Where's my thread? There. And then add those. Oops. What you can also do is just grab that thread. Might add a little bit more there. And hey, you can also use fibers and whatnot. Make it interesting, you know? So if you don't want to glue this on, you don't have to. And just grab that stamp and just staple it. And that staples everything into place. So here's the one with the stamp, stamps. So you can tear this off. It's that tear off strip and that one. And then make it as wild as you want. I'm just gonna add a bit more here. And there we have that one. I just added the bird stamps and then the thread with some staples. And that's seriously it, that's all I've done. So here's my Harry Potter journal again. So I wanted to show you that if you have, uh, let me see, a booklet like that, and you wanna add a little element without, you know, having to glue everything on top of the booklet, but you wanna have a little tester first, you can add a little tag there or you can add one of these on top. You can add it to a corner of a page or as a tab at the top or um, like, at, well, that's one of the other booklets. If you have a tag, you can add this to a tag. If the tag is a little bit bigger, you can add that and make it a pocket in the tag. The possibilities are seriously endless. But now, obviously, we need to put all of these in this journal. So, I did not make that one. I still don't have any pockets. So, this one, for instance, we can just tuck in there. And we have this one. Just put in there. I really, really do like this one, to be honest. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Always like to divide it a little bit and we can wrap this around here and add that with another paper clip. And, the top of them. and the last one we can add here. 
And that's it. That's the tags done. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you crafted along and um, are busy filling your journal or your ephemera box with your own, own handmade ephemera. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye. Thank you.